Journey to Busca, Orthodox Spiritual Reflections on Great Lent, brought to you by the Greek Orthodox Christian Society of the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of Australia. The homily on Christ's descent into Hades by Saint Epiphanius. What thing is this? Today there is great silence upon the earth, great silence and stillness, verily great silence, for the king sleeps. The earth was frightened and became still, for God fell asleep in the flesh and raised up those who from ages past were sleeping. God died in the flesh and Hades shuddered. God slumbered briefly and those in Hades he awoke. Let us hasten in mind and journey to this place to see how he masterfully mastered the tyrannical master and how by the lightning flash of his hands he captured the whole soldiery of the ranks of those deathless orders. Christ the door shattered those woodless gates by the wood of the cross. By those divine nails he burst and broke the eternal bars. By the bonds of his divine hands he dissolved like wax the indissoluble bonds, and by the spear thrust in his side, he transfixed the heart of the tyrant. There did he break the power of the bow, when upon the cross he stretched out the sinews of his divine arms like a bowman. Therefore, if you presently follow Christ silently, you shall see where he bound the tyrant, where he hung the ladder's head, how he exhumed that dungeon, where he led the prisoners, how he trampled upon the serpent where he suspended its skull, and how he liberated Adam, how he raised up Eve, how he broke down the middle wall, how he punished the bitter dragon, how he made perdition to perish, and where he restored man to his ancient dignity. Yesterday, by way of economy, he refused to summon numerous legions of angels, saying to Peter, Can I not now bring forward more than twelve legions of angels? But today, in a matter befitting God, a warrior and a sovereign, through death he tramples down the tyrant of Hades, and death, having with him the immortal legions, not simply twelve, but thousands of thousands, and ten thousand ten thousands, of the bodiless hosts and the invisible ranks, the dominions, the unthroned thrones, the unwinged six-winged, the eyeless, many-eyed, and all the celestial bands. Therefore they descended then in haste, hastening with their God and Master to the subterranean chambers of Hades, which are deeper down than anything terrestrial, and to the underworldly abodes of them that have fallen asleep from ages past. There he gallantly brought forth them that from of old lay in fetters. As soon as the glistering, divinely accompanied presence of the Master reached Hades' windowless, sunless, nocturnal dungeons, hovels, lairs, and caves. Gabriel, the chief marshal, was first of all, since indeed he is wont to bring men good tidings of joy, to exclaim with a mighty, archangelic resounding, commanding, lion-like voice to the hostile powers, Lift up your gates, O you princes. And with him Michael cries, Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting gates. Thereafter the powers say, Stand back, ye iniquitous gatekeepers. Then the dominions say with dominion, Be broken, unbreakable bonds. And others, be abashed, abominable foes. And still others, fear ye, ye lawless tyrants. Now just as before, a fearsome, invincible, all-powerful, regal, trophy-bearing battle array, terror and panic and pangs of dread seize the enemies of an unconquerable king. So and more. So it befell those evil beings in Hades at the sudden, most strange coming of Christ to the nether world. The blinding bolt of lightning from above darkened the countenances of the hostile powers of Hades, and they heard thunder-like voices, and the angelic host commanding, Lift up your gates, O ye princes. Do not merely open them, but lift them from the foundations. Uproot them, remove them, so that they never again be closed. Lift up your gates, O ye princes. 
And as soon as the hosts cried these things, straight away the gates were raised up, straight away the bonds were loosed, straight away the bars were broken, straight away the bolts fell away, straight away the foundations of the dungeons quaked, straight away the hostile powers were turned to flight, one pushing the other, one impeding the other, one exclaiming to the other, flee! They were terrified, they were shaken, they were awestruck. They were confounded, they were altered, they were frightened, they were dumbstruck and stupefied, confused and made to quake. One stood agape, one between his knees hid his head, another lay prostrate, another like one dead was motionless, another was possessed by awe, another lay with altered countenance, and another fled to an inner region. The hosts of the master cried to those wicked spirits, Do not linger, do not delay, but speedily bring forth those in bonds which you wickedly swallowed till this day. From now your dominion is destroyed, your tyranny is come to an end, your insolence is miserably extinguished, your arrogance is quashed, your might is trampled and ruined. These things the royal hosts of the king spoke to the hostile powers and then made haste. Some excavated the dungeon from its very foundations while some routed the enemy's hosts from the outer regions, causing them to flee within. But others ran and searched the hovels, the jails and the caverns, and others brought prisoners before the master from every quarter. Others bound the tyrant with infrangible bonds. Others speedily obeyed them, and some ran before the master, and he proceeded to the innermost regions, while others followed him as the victorious king and god. And the master's presence was about to reach the very bottommost realm of the nethermost regions. Then Adam, the first of men to be created, the first fashioned and first mortal, who lay in the innermost recesses bound with great security, heard the sound of the master's feet as he came to the imprisoned. And he recognized his voice, which sounded in the prison as he walked. Adam turned towards all his fellow captives from ages past and said, I hear the sound of someone's feet advancing towards us, and if he deigns to come even to this place, we shall be freed of our bonds. Nay, if we should but see him in our midst, we shall be delivered from Hades. And as Adam said these things and their like to all of his fellow prisoners, the master entered within, holding the cross as a weapon of victory. Then Adam, the first fashioned, beholding him, beat his breast in exuberance and cried to all, My Lord be with you all. And Christ replied and said to Adam, And with thy spirit. And grasping his hand, he said, Stand up, awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall shine on thee. I am your God, who for your sake became your son, for your sake and for your descendants' sake. And now I say, and with authority command the shackled, Come forth, and those in darkness, be enlightened, and those asleep, arise, I enjoin you. Awake, O sleeper, for I did not fashion you to be held in Hades as a captive. Arise from the dead, for I am the life of the dead. Arise, my creation, arise, my image, who was also made in my likeness. Arise, let us go, for you are in me and I in you. We are one indivisible person. For your sake, your God became your son. For your sake, the master took the image of a slave. For your sake, I, who am above the heavens, came down upon earth, and even beneath the earth, for you who are a man. I became as a man without help, free among the dead. For you who left from the garden of paradise, I from a garden was betrayed to the Jews, and in a garden I was crucified. Therefore arise, let us go, from death into life, from corruption into incorruption, from darkness into everlasting light. Arise, Let us go from affliction into joy, from slavery into freedom, from prison into the Jerusalem on high, from bonds into repose, from detention into the delight of paradise, from earth into heaven. And for this did I die and arose, that I should be Lord both of the dead and the living. Arise, let us go, for my heavenly Father waits for the sheep that was lost, the ninety and nine sheep. The angels await their fellow servant Adam, when he shall arise, when he shall ascend and go up to God. A cherubic throne is prepared, 
and the bearers thereof are swift and expectant. The bridal chamber is made ready, the delicacies are prepared, the eternal tabernacles and abodes are waiting, the treasuries of good things are thrown open, the kingdom of the heavens has been prepared before the ages, and that which eye has not seen, nor ears heard, neither has entered into the heart of man, these same good things await mankind. When the master said this and more, Adam, being united to him inwardly, rose up, and Eve arose as well. And the bodies of many others who in faith had fallen asleep from ages past arose also, preaching the Master's resurrection on the third day. The same, O men of faith, let us now joyously welcome, let us behold it and embrace it, as we form one chorus with the angels and with the bodiless celebrate and glorify Christ, who raised us up from corruption and gave us life, to whom be glory and dominion with his Father, who is without beginning, and is all holy, good, and life-creating spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. hope that you have enjoyed this episode of the Journey to Pascha podcast. Please be sure to subscribe on your preferred listening platform and check out the Greek Orthodox Christian Society YouTube channel. Our website at lichnos.org, that's L-Y-C-H-N-O-S dot O-R-G, and our Orthodox Journey Facebook and Instagram sites for even more Orthodox spiritual content.